Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for dialing in to the Global Reviews Savings DSE webinar today. I am Rebecca Jennings, uh, Principal Client Advisor here at Global Reviews, and it's my task for the next half an hour or so to talk you through the latest results from the savings uh, DSE research that, that recently been conducted in the UK. I'm going to talk you through briefly the uh, what we did, the methodology. Uh, I'm also going to talk you through the top line results and try and highlight some of the key pains that are coming out of the research pains for consumers when they are researching and trying to apply for savings accounts uh, in the UK. So, very quickly for those of you uh, on the call today who perhaps haven't uh, come across us uh, a lot before, uh, who are we? Well, uh, Global Reviews are a leading uh, data analytics and advisory organization across UK, Europe uh, and Australasia, uh, well established in these markets now for some uh, 15 years. We have a number of tracks of research, uh, primarily looking at digital marketing effectiveness, so how do people find brands in your market, uh, how do people find who is offering products uh, within your uh, market, how do they make choices as to which brands to research and which brands to select, uh, what are your lost opportunities. Uh, what are the search terms that are working in your market uh, right now? That's uh, something new we're looking at uh, this, this year. So we have the digital marketing piece, and we have the digital sales piece, which is what we're going to be actually focusing on that for the next 30 minutes or so, is how effective is your site at uh, convincing consumers that they would like to transact with you, and then how effective is it at closing that, getting them through the application form or the purchase uh, process. We do this across a number of markets. You can see from some of the just the top head selection of brands there across uh, multiple types of financial services. So we're going to talk about savings today, but we also do current accounts, mortgages. Uh, we walk across credit cards, energy, um, uh, sports betting, uh, multiple types of insurance, car, motor, um, home. So a variety of markets that we are uh, active in across uh, the territories, both online and mobile. Again, what we're going to talk about today is uh, looking at the experience on the online site, but we also do this uh, both these types of research across mobile. It's important to just comment here, uh, I'm going to talk about methodology, but the, the methodology of both of these uh, research, the research that we do, is very much a lifelike methodology. It focuses on taking in-market real consumers who are in the market for this particular product right now and pushing them through uh, the DME, the marketing effectiveness, finding brands, and also, say what we're going to talk about here, uh, the sales process, putting them through a number of tasks and questions across the sites themselves. And of course, that's supplemented to um, the best practice audit that we conduct ourselves. So I'll touch on that um, in terms of uh, methodology in a moment. So that's just who we are, so to, to sort of set the scene. Um, so I'm Rebecca Jennings. I'm a principal client advisor here uh, at Global Reviews, have been for uh, a number of years now. Um, so let's just talk very quickly about uh, what the DSE is before we delve into the, the data itself, just so you have an understanding of what it is that uh, we did. The DSE benchmarks that we conduct across, conduct across those different markets are all constructed based on mapping the journey a consumer will naturally take when looking to purchase a product. So looking at the steps they take across a website, the kind of research they do, the quotes they take, for example, the comparisons they do, to allow us to take a deep dive into each of those steps. The benchmark itself consists of up to 500 individual data points and that comes from both consumers and from, as I said, this best practice audit that uh, is conducted. So consumers are asked to undertake a number of tasks. Uh, so it could be find a particular product, find a fee, uh, get a quote, um, get a go through the application form. They're also asked a number of questions about that process, satisfaction, effectiveness, etc. They're also asked to rate and review the experience, but also the features and functions that they come on. So there's three types of research essentially comes from the consumers themselves. Remember those in-market consumers. Um, and then there's another bunch of data points up to around 300, 350 that come from the best practice audit conducted internally by our experts across each step of the journey. 
So those are yes, no questions. They're not subject to uh, debate. They're not, oh, do we like the blue? It is a yes, no, does the site have, does the site contain this content, does the home page have this link, uh, et cetera. So um, extensive amount of data that rolls up across the journey, and I'll show you the journey in a moment. It rolls up across the journey to some 64 uh, metrics across the journey, um, including a competitive view. What we do within the DSE uh, is quite uh, innovative in that we don't only give you your own data in terms of how does your journey perform, but we also show you how your competitors view, and it's not anonymized. We will show you how the other brands in the market uh, perform at each step. Obviously, that's uh, very interesting, both in terms of comparison, how you're doing, benchmarking against your competitors. It's worth seeing who's in, in the market is doing something well and who isn't. But it's also worth, at that point, understanding whether there are business pains uh, that everybody is feeling or whether there are individual pains. And you'll see that as we go through most industries we look at, individual brands have issues, but also there are industry pains. Um, and it's sometimes worth looking outside of your own industry to see how another industry has dealt with that particular problem, um, which is uh, very interesting from the, say, from the multitude of brands that we work with. It's uh, easy for us to reach out and find best practices from those other markets uh, within that uh, methodology. So that's the extent of the data. Um, I'm not going to show you obviously all 500 data points here. That's uh, impossible. I'm going to show you the top line interesting results and the key pains uh, from from that. Um, I mentioned the, the benchmark, the journey that consumers take, and it's broken down into steps that we can then uh, look at at very uh, granular levels. And this is uh, the sort of buckets that data is put into the journey that consumers go through. Uh, when they are asked to do this uh, uh, research and also the journey that we go through when we do the best practice audit. So as I say, it's starting to mimic uh, and uh, reflect the journey that consumers take when they're looking to research and purchase or apply for uh, a savings product in this particular case. So we have initial engagement, how they come first to the website, does the, the home page or the landing page meet their expectations and build your trust? Does it look like a brand I'd want to give my money to? Do it look like a brand I can trust to with my financial security going forward? Uh, does the site accommodate returning prospects if I've been and come back before? Do I have to try and find where I was previously? So, so the initial engagement that consumers have with the site. Through introducing options, what have you got? Can I find a product range easily? Um, can I go in and start understanding what it would actually mean to me to, to take out some of these products? How easy is it just to understand what you've got? Can I match a product to my specific need? Can I only look at particular types of product to the need that I'm looking for, a long-term investment, a short-term, uh, no extraction fee, et cetera? What is it that's important to me? Can I easily figure out from on your website what it is that you've got that suits those needs? And then facilitating decisions. Okay, I found something that's kind of interesting to me as a consumer, but why am I taking the policy out with you? Why, when I've got five or six different savings accounts here that all look extremely similar from different brands. Why am I picking yours? Looking at any sort of external comparison, but also contacting the company. I've got issues, questions, worries. Why choose you as a brand? What's different about you? What's your USP? And then moving into what we call the ACT phase. Uh, so I've done the consider phase. I'm moving into the ACT phase. How do I apply? If it's online, is there complete and considered uh, information about how to do that? Am I encouraged to do it online? If there are other channels available to me, am I shown those easily? Am I shown what kind of documents I would need to do that? And then through the application form itself, form support, uh, and completing the form, uh, how easy is it to do that, and uh, how does it deal with problems? So that's the benchmark that we're going to look at. Um, all of that data rolls up. Ultimately, the top line is a score. Um, the customer experience score, and it's expressed as a percentage. So all those 500 data points, they go across that journey, and those six buckets come up to 64 metrics. They're all put together and weighted. Uh, obviously, not everything's as important as everything else. So they're weighted based on needs and our own expertise. But the top line, uh, if you like, is a score. On average, we'd say that a score 55% or less was not delivering a, the customer experience that consumers were expecting. You were failing your consumers. 
5563 means you're okay, probably doing uh, an okay job, uh, but as you'll see in a moment, there are probably elements within that are falling below that. It's, it's highly unlikely or highly unusual, in fact, to get a brand that's scoring that across that journey. There are usually pieces where they're doing very well and pieces where they're doing very poorly. And again, 64, okay, yeah, it's, a, it's a pretty good pretty good example of the genre of, uh, of meeting consumers' needs. But again, as we see, we genuinely find that that's not a consistent score across those stages. And actually, scores above that are rare. Uh, we get one or two within sports betting, but outside of that, that's a, a rare thing to see. So having set the scene on what scores uh, we might be expecting to see, let's have a look at the top line scores for savings accounts uh, in Q3-14, so very recent uh, research we conducted in the UK. A couple of things to, to take away from this, I mean firstly as I mentioned a moment ago, um, the scores are not high. <laughs> we get, as you can see here, 57% is the highest score we're seeing, and then we've got both Santander and Nationwide tying on that. Interestingly, for different reasons, those we'll see uh, slightly in a moment. They do different things well. Um, and again, with Lloyd's, there are a few different things that they do. So it's not the case that they're all doing the same things. They are definitely doing different things to attain that score. Uh, we've got a close market. We've got four brands up there on 54, 55, 56, 57. Um, so pretty close. Wouldn't take much for one of those to leap over the others. Uh, but also then you've got a bunch of brands that are sort of trailing behind um, down to Barclays at uh, at 35 percent. So there's a lot of opportunity for the brands in this market to increase that score. Um, a lot of these things are not requiring fundamental redesign of website. That's not what uh, not what we're about. We are not uh, uh, advising multi-million pound redevelopment of CRM systems. What we're very much about within the DSE is actionable insight. Um, small pieces of improvements across the journey that can increase that score and increase consumer satisfaction, ultimately increase the percentage of consumers that ultimately go on to apply for uh, a savings account and potentially, hopefully, uh, other products as well. So there we are, uh, top line results. We've got pretty low scoring uh, industry as a whole, average of around 51%. Um, definitely some scope for improvement across all of these brands here, even in those uh, those top brands, there's definite scope for improvement. I mentioned a moment ago that uh, there are often industry pains as well as brand pains. It's really interesting to look at how this profile looks to see whether there are elements where an entire industry is doing something poorly uh, or whether there are outliers within that of brands that are doing things particularly well. Um, and also sometimes, as I say, to look at other industries and say, okay, my industry is doing really poorly on this. Is there another industry out there that's doing better? And as you can see from this, as you can see a scoop um, kind of shape here, we've very much got a situation here where there are industry pains as well as brand pains. No brand in our market scores more than 40%, for example, for facilitating decisions. And if you remember, that's the piece where we're looking at, well, why will I am actually choosing you? I've found a product that I'm interested in, but actually all these products are the same. I don't understand the differences between you. I don't understand the differences between the products. Um, I need to reach out to you to ask a question. How easy is that? What's the USP for you as Lloyd's or Halifax or Barclays or RBS? What is it that makes you different? No brand in our market scores more than 40% of that. So it's a big industry pain point here. Generally speaking, brands do better as an industry across uh, application form, for example. That's clearly uh, one of the, the higher scoring areas where brands have a sort of closer uh, score here. Um, the exception here, um, I believe at the time of the study doing Barclays, where you couldn't apply online for, for the account, which is why there's a, uh, an NA or a, a zero being scored for, for Barclays for that particular piece. Um, but as I say, it's not that I want to dwell on every single point here for all the brands, it's more of a safe thing to look at, that, look at that shape and it's sort of understanding where you come in that and seeing, okay, well, there are industry pain points here as well as there are brand pain. So let's look at some of those. It's quite obvious, you can see here, when we look at the highest score at each stage, what the key, uh, some of the key pain elements are. Um, we've obviously got quite high scores, as I mentioned, coming out of um, application form, 68% is the highest, uh, but we've got poorer scores uh, higher coming out of the middle here, 39% facilitate decisions, I just mentioned that, but also overall poorer scores coming out for evaluating options and channel selection. So 
there are key pain points across this journey where even the highest score is pretty poor. Um, interestingly, we do have higher scores uh, for introducing options, for example. On average, uh, this is quite a lot lower than that, but Nationwide is doing well here. So again, interesting to be able to pinpoint the brands perhaps standing out in a particular sector doing something that some of the other brands in the market aren't doing. So let's look at some of the key pains as we go across this market. As I say, we've got industry pains and we've got brand pains, depending on your brand. Uh, the relative importance of some of those things will differ. Uh, the relative importance and your capability to change and to adapt to the customer needs uh, will differ. Um, and obviously, marketing uh, pressures will, will differ and how easy it is to change some of these. But certainly, let's look at some of the industry pains where none of the brands in the market are doing particularly well. This is the first sort of uh, key pain here we have um, in the piece called evaluating options. Now, this is the stage where consumers have uh, come to the website. They've decided to go further into a bit of research. They've gone through the introducing options. Okay, what have you got? Kind of looks interesting. Let's have a little spend a little bit more time on the site figuring out. At this point, do you have a product that actually suits my needs specifically? I have a specific desire, for example, to have a long-term bond, or I want a short-term account with no um, access penalties for instant access, or whatever it happens to be. Um, how easy is it for consumers to look through the offerings on the site and find the specific suit products that suit their specific needs? In some cases, that's actually extremely hard. Uh, we've got low scores, for example, uh, brands like Lloyd's and NatWest uh, scoring particularly poorly here. No brand scoring particularly well, uh, particularly highly across, across all of these. Um, brands doing very poorly, generally speaking, in providing calculating tools to help consumers understand things like, why would I save full stop? What is the benefit of a, a monthly saver, for example? What am I going to have at the end of three years, four years, five years? What is the, can, I, can I translate it into something real, uh, a car, a holiday, whatever it happens to be, my children's university fees? What is it that I'm actually going to get at the end of this, and how do these things uh, compare? So very few brands are helping consumers take that next step after showing you the products and actually holding their hand and saying, well, what does this actually mean for me individually and my saving goals? And that's increasingly where we're getting to with consumers who are wanting uh, this kind of um, access and this kind of additional information. Uh, they're wanting to understand that the product that they've got actually suits their specific needs and isn't just a generic product they've had to pick off the shelf because they didn't understand uh, what was going on. So what's going on here? Well, as I say, we ask consumers to undertake specific tasks. And this specific task was to find a savings account with something uh, very uh, specific about it. Obviously, we made sure that there was a product on each particular site that, that suits this. Um, it was a, a task that uh, differs slightly depending on which site it is. Um, the consumers who do each each site are different, so we have a different set of consumers who do Lloyd's, another set do Barclays, another set do RBS, there's no learnability, um, they're, and so they, they're given a task to go and find a specific account that we know exists. Could be, as I say, a sample here, highest interest rate that provide unlimited withdrawals as well as instant access. So how easy is it to find a product that suits those particular boxes that are important to them? On average, across those sites, only 50% of consumers manage to find the product we ask them to find. That's uh, really low, actually, when it comes to this kind of kind of research. It's uh, something I expected to be higher. Um, consumers, when they'd actually found it, were reasonably confident. But even those who did manage to find the product we asked them to find weren't wholly convinced they'd actually managed to find it, uh, which obviously has a bleeding effect into the satisfaction. We've got satisfaction down at around 62 63%. Consumers really weren't particularly happy with the process of trying to figure out uh, a product that suits specific needs, even when they'd be successful. And 50% of the sum, as you can see, they're just not successful. Consumers really struggled to firstly find the specifics. So you've got an example here with Tesco's, four different boxes. It's showing you different pieces of information about the different products. It's really hard to look at each of those and figure out, well, What's different about these? What the information about those? How do I compare them? What's the difference between saver and instant access savings, actually? And there's no page that enables me to actually put those things side by side. 
Barclays takes another step and just says, actually, we will break it up a little bit. But even then, when you actually look into the products, you've got a long page of information. Uh, it's very difficult to look at the things side by side and understand which is different. You have to essentially read every single page individually to figure out whether it suits your needs or not. So consumers got very frustrated um, and very um, uh, exasperated with the process of finding something that uh, was perceived to be relatively simple and so very unsatisfied with the process. Uh, Lloyd's didn't do too badly. Um, Lloyd's do help users to compare by key features. This is one thing that uh, was, was quite successful. Um, I'd say nobody did hugely well on this, but Lloyd's does take that next step to help under consumers understand uh, by uh, some quite clear tabs, uh, savings accounts, online accounts, instant access, so bringing out some of the key features that might be important to consumers, so ISAs, children's savings, fixed-term savings, clear tabs that can be pressed to see the, the comparison underneath. You can also sort these, so you can sort by interest rate, you can sort by minimum deposit, um, so again you can start to understand, okay, I want something that's a really low deposit, um, but with the highest interest rate possible, so you can start to understand that way. There's also information here to be had as you mouse over the little question mark, what is a withdrawal, what's interest paid, what's access. So they are trying to help consumers understand what it is that the, the range of products offers and what might suit their needs uh, most effectively. But it's still hard. Our consumers still found it hard to look at a list, say, of nine accounts that go down the page like this and page up and down and trying to find the best one for their needs. It's still a lot of information, small print, uh, effectively. It's a classic um, financial services small print uh, problem. Amex, actually, in financial services, but obviously a different product, actually score better for this in terms of comparison. So they actually have uh, an offering which is, is a multitude of cards, uh, probably 15 or 20 cards altogether, different uh, reward cards, business cards, um, uh, offering different services like concierge, etc. So they allow you to select a few cards that are interesting to you and then just compare those, so pick three or four, say, and they will go down the page, as you can see here on the right. Much easier for consumers to scan across here and see what the key features are, see what the difference is between the features are. Does this one have cashback? Oh, yes, yes, they all do. Does it have this? No, this one does. This, this doesn't. Very clear, bring out what the, the key reasons are. Also, what you've got here are reasons uh, to, to purchase from, to, to apply with Amex, earning rewards, welcome bonus, and you've got a, a very clear call to action with apply now. So. Consumers, when actually asked to find uh, this particular task within credit cards, Amex does uh, uh, can quite considerably better than the, the savings accounts just by not necessarily providing a whole lot of extra information. It's not rewriting a whole lot of extra information. It's just presenting it slightly differently and giving consumers a little bit more power over what they see and what they don't and the way it is presented. Moving on to the second pain. Uh, here, uh, facilitating decisions, I mentioned this earlier, as being the lowest score that we get, the lowest average uh, and the lowest absolute uh, top score. Now this is about consumers have found that product, found the instant saver account that might be interesting to them, but actually they're not convinced why they're getting it from you. They don't understand the difference between Nationwide, NatWest, RBS, Santander, HSBC. What is it that's about you that makes you different? How do you facilitate that external comparison? This may not be about explicitly putting in your interest rates compared to others, but it may be about enabling consumers to take this information away and share with a friend, share with a partner, discuss later, is this the ISA we want or is it this one? How easy can you make it for them to do that without having to scribble down little pieces of information on scraps of paper? How easy do you present test con contact details, um, help, FAQs? How do I reach out to you to solve a problem, both online and offline? And ultimately, this why choose us? What is it that makes you different? What's your USPs in the market, both internal validation, but also external, any awards, any um, external validation of the brand? It's really, really important to focus on this piece. This is why uh, this is a key pain here. Um, and I think perhaps uh, some brands sort of fail to, to perhaps appreciate the percentage of consumers who actually will have no tolerance for problems or issues across the journey. We ask consumers in the DME, if you remember that's what I mentioned earlier, the marketing piece, how do you find brands, how do you to, to research brands in this market, um, to find brands to, to look at in the uh, sort of research stage. We ask consumers, well, if you had a problem, what would you do? 
29 percent would say, oh, I'll look for everyone else's questions or help. That's great. So that's really what people tend, tend to think about, or could we look about FAQ or help. But look at some of the other things that are coming out here. 17 percent would look for online web chat. This is an absolutely standard uh, piece of technology that uh, growing percentage of consumers look at. A couple of years ago, that was probably 4 percent. We're now looking at 17 percent, and that is growing rapidly. People expect to see online web chat. They expect to see contact us, expect your telephone numbers. But also, 17% would actually just leave. They would give you no leeway at all in terms of problems or errors or looking for phone numbers, looking for contact details. They would just leave. It's absolutely vital that all this kind of stuff, all this kind of reach out, solve a problem is really uh, clear to consumers. So external comparison. Um, I mentioned not necessarily explicitly laying out interest rates. That's obviously a very difficult thing to do and certainly not a short-term uh, fix. But HSBC here trying to help consumers make this uh, decision, make it easy so they can share, uh, they can perhaps uh, show it to somebody else, but also they can print, print it in a nice, neat print, printed page that lays out the uh, alternatives for savings accounts. There's little things that are making it easy for consumers to take this away rather than, as I say, scribbling things down on scrappy pieces of paper. I know you're going to have a nicely printed out paper with this uh, offerings on. Santander, talking about questions, talking about help. Product pages actually have relevant FAQs on the bottom of them. You don't have to go hunting through FAQ or help sections to find relevant questions to the product that you're looking at. There are four or five of them at the bottom of uh, the product page. So what's the interest rate? How do I close it? How do I change my information? Uh, so key things that are interesting about that particular product. Also worth noting here, again, on every product page, there's links to more health and support. There's links to contact us with a little drop in there, UK-based contact centers, and a branch locator. So it's saying, OK, let's try and help to you solve the problem online. Here's access to more help. Didn't that, that hasn't solved your problem, okay, you can contact us, do this a ring, or if you want to pop in and come and see us. So multiple choices for consumers to reach out and solve a problem here. And then lastly here, as we saw nationwide, uh, getting the highest score in terms of why choose us. This is something that's relatively new. The site has been redone in the last uh, six months or so. And one of the things they are focusing on is why would you choose us. So bringing out not only internal validation, so um, things like customer satisfaction, exclusive products, for the, a wide product range, but also bringing out external validation here. We're proud of the awards we've won. You've got Your Money Direct, for example, best online account provider. We've got best credit card provider. We've got best savings provider. A multitude of awards from different brands, very relevant uh, and very recent, and just providing a little bit of external validation to the consumer and reassurance that I'm making the right decision with, with going with Nationwide. And then the final pane I'm going to look at uh, in this session today, the application form itself. We did see that these are generally scoring overall pretty high, but actually we do have a pain within this, which is the internal uh, sort of help and uh, FAQ and support within the forms themselves to encourage consumers to keep going, to solve their problems within the form. A lot of forms here have uh, troubleshooting that takes consumers out of the form itself, um, doesn't tell them how long things are going to take, it doesn't provide the in-form support. There is the assumption that once they get here, they're going to complete it, but that's absolutely not the case. They need to be supported, they need to give you help all the way through the process. And we saw, say, here we've got some, uh, some, say, some low scores going on with the, the completing the form um, here. So definitely some uh, room for improvement here. And then some of the verbatims we get from consumers explain some of those pains. Um, as I say, when we go through the research consumers are asked to use tasks, we can get the effectiveness, how well we saw earlier, how effective they are, but also we ask them what their key pains were, what their problems were. We get a lot of verbatims as to why they couldn't do what we wanted them to do. And we still got a lot of verbatims complaining about the, just the nitty gritty of actually filling in the form. So things like I couldn't see anywhere I could get for help, couldn't see where to start, um, progress was not indicated, I didn't know where I was in the form, how long it was going to take, and repeatedly things like too much information required without explanation as to why. Why are you asking for my date of birth? It's complicated. Why are you asking for a home phone number? 
what format do you want it? I don't have a home phone number anymore. I only go by user mobile. Why do you need these things and what are you going to do with them? And the Amex example here, again, um, is, is a good one, taking you out of the savings market. Because um, I say sometimes it's, it's really useful to look at other uh, brands and how they're approaching these issues because they have exactly the same issues. So you've got the credit card application form here, and this does a number of things really well. Firstly, on the right-hand side, you've got a phone number, a list of FAQs. You've also got very clearly what it is you're applying for. It doesn't just say your application form. It says what it is specifically they're applying for. There's constant reassurance through the process. There's steps at the top that shows consumers where they are, gives them an idea where they are in the process. But actually, what it's doing really well here is the inbox uh, and help next to box help. It's doing three things really well. Please enter your home phone number without spaces. Okay, what do you what is this box asking for, and how is it asking for it? What kind of format does it want? Does it want capital letters? Does it want spaces? Okay, no, home phone number without spaces. Why do you want it? It's required as part of the standard credit checks. Help us to process your application as quickly as possible. Okay, that's why it's needed. What are you going to do with it? Okay, it will never be given out to anyone else or used for marketing purposes without your permission. So what do you want? Why do you want it? And what are you going to do with it? All neatly provided the consumer there in that uh, that one box. You've also got that link to contextually relevant questions. That FAQ on the right-hand side doesn't just take consumers into a big help section where they have to navigate through and find their, the answer to their question. It takes them directly to the top frequently asked questions about this particular page. So how long will it take? Five to ten minutes. Is it safe? What am I going to need? Can I save it? Or do I have to complete it in one go? Those key questions consumers are going to have at this point in the process and keep them within the journey without, say, taking them out into a help section where they're going to get lost and get frustrated and leave, as we saw earlier. So what does this all mean? That was a whistle-stop tour through the uh, savings DSE. Some of the key pains that I think were coming out of that, very clearly in terms of giving consumers a helping hand to find these this product information, it should really be simple. Consumers want to be reassured that you've got a product that suits their specific needs. All the information is there, but at the moment they're not being able to find it. They're not being able to look at uh, the, the product's equivalent easily side by side. They're really struggling to find something that suits their needs in the mass of 20, 15, 20 uh, savings products. So really, you need to give them a helping hand. You need to help them help themselves online, finding the FAQ, finding that relevant FAQ on each page, finding the phone numbers with the opening hours, looking at the, the branch details if relevant. We saw you will not get a second chance, particularly in this kind of product. There's a lot of products out there. It's not uh, anything difficult to go and find another, another provider of this type of product. So you will not get a second chance if they have a question, if they have a problem. You have to be right there on it and solve it. And you have to walk them through. Just because they've opened up that application form and started to fill it in does not mean they're going to finish. Tell them why you need things. Tell them what you're expecting. Tell them what you're going to do with that data. Reassure them all the way through the process. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening in uh, this afternoon. Um, I hope the, uh, the session has been interesting. We have a number of other uh, research programs coming up, um, both in the very short term and then going through uh, the program through in 2015. Savings, this piece of work will be run again in February. Uh, just before that, in January, we're actually running a credit card uh, DSE. Uh, if you wanted to see how Amex actually do across their competitors, that would be a really interesting one to, to look at. Um, and then mortgages, current accounts, personal loans, all running through next year as well. Uh, two waves of each of this DSE research uh, across these products running next year. Also, I've mentioned the DME a number of times, the marketing piece, looking at why people find uh, brands they do, how do they do it, what search terms are they using, what search terms work, what's your lost opportunity in terms of consumers who research a product, uh, shortlist your brand, but then choose somebody else. We run those programs across all of the uh, brand, all of the markets here you're seeing on a monthly basis. If you are interested in any of those, talking about uh, what's coming up, please contact Liam O'Callaghan. You can see his email there, Liam O'Callaghan at globalreviews.com. If you have any questions uh, about the research, about the presentation today, please do call to me. I'm Rebecca.Jennings at globalreviews.com or for any other questions or for uh, a copy of the uh, webinar, which will also be available on our Global Reviews YouTube channel. So thank you very much for your attention this afternoon, um, and uh, talk to you soon.